for Buckner uh, defensively, McNamara wanted Buckner in there to enjoy the celebration, which he deserved. Bill Buckner was on the field because he was the best first baseman I had. So Buckner took the field in the bottom of the 10th. What happened to the Red Sox in the bottom of the 10th inning of the sixth game of the World Series at Shea should not happen to any team ever in baseball or any other sport. We have two outs and nobody on, and the, a message flash, flashes up on the uh, board, right very small in the corner, congratulations, Red Sox, world champions. And I thought, oh my God. There's two outs, nobody on base, you're ahead by two runs, this thing's over. And uh, I was typing my story, and, and you know, Carter got the hit, and you're like, well, yeah, this is a little annoying thing, you know. Oh, and I just thought, this is great, you know, a little bloop single, no problem. And then, of course, uh, Kevin Mitchell came up, and, you know, the folklore in this thing is amazing. I mean, he's supposedly in the clubhouse on the telephone with no jock on, making calls or reservations back to San Diego to get home. You know, he's summoned to go up and hit, and he had been Calvin Chiraldi's roommate with the Mets, you know, years earlier. And, you know, roommates lying in bed talking about, what would you ever do if you faced me? Well, I'd probably start you up and in and then go low and away. So he remembers this, and Chiraldi starts him up and in. Swing foul, low and one. Then he goes low and away, and he punches a single to center field. He's hit. Two outs, two strikes, man on first base. Another single. And I'm going, no big deal, two run late. And then Ray Knight came up and got jammed right on his hands, hit it over my head into right center. And the next thing you know, it was first and third, and, and we were up by a run. goes to the mound. Five-four Red Sox, and he's also going to the bullpen. He wants Bob Stanley to pitch to Mookie Wilson. When the bullpen door flies open and the steamer comes out of there, I can tell you there was a lot of shrieking in establishments like the one we're sitting in. Bad things always happen to Bob Stanley. And then after that, Rich Gedman called for a sinker away, and Bob Stanley thought it was a fastball inside to Mookie Wilson. And Gedman uh, barely got a glove on it, and I don't know how they ended up scoring it, but that allowed them to tie the game. Well, the game's tied, still two outs, man on second base. We still felt real good about ourselves, and uh, no big deal. We could come back in and, and uh, get another run if we had to. I had called a, a, a pickoff play. Ray Knight was kind of a slow, uh, slow base runner, and he had a huge lead off second base, and the crowd was loud, and I knew the third base coach couldn't warn him. Marty Barrett's standing on second base. You know, all Stanley's got to do is turn around and throw the ball to him. I called it again and started to scoot over towards second, and I think Bill cheated over a little bit. So I can't leave the whole right side of the infield open, so I got I cheat over. You know, Marty's now cheated up the middle. I'm, I'm cheated over. I'm way deeper than I normally would be. Three and two to Mookie Wilson. And he pops it in the air. Foul off to the right. Gedman coming over. He will not have a play. Line drive foul. Two out. Three and two to Mookie Wilson. I remember what I was wearing. Little roller up along first, behind the back, it gets to Buckner, here comes Knight and the Mets win it! I remember putting my head in my hands and being very upset, and I remember thinking, I wanted to speak to Bill, and I remember thinking, we need to come back and win game seven. And I could see Buckner, you know, working in his mind, what's what's he going to do? How can he beat Mookie Wilson in the bag? Can Stanley beat Mookie Wilson in the bag? I went down and tried to make sure that the ball didn't get by me and put my other hand down, and I think that had something to do with pulling me over to the left a little bit, and the ball went to the, to the right of the road. Shea Stadium's going crazy. Now you look at Buckner. He looks like a figure from another era. And the whole way he carries himself in the high top shoes and the dirty uniform. You know, it was 1986, it could have been 1946. You know, and he's walking off, um, downtrodden, hobbling. When he missed the ball, I actually felt a real emptiness in my stomach, you know. I did. But Bill didn't see it any other way than uh, we'll get him tomorrow. Buckner got two hits in the seventh game, and the Red Sox took a three-run lead into the late innings. But again, their bullpen did not hold up. 
and the Mets won 8-5.